Automotive captives have long been a success story. Thanks to their fairly stable business model, captives have on average contributed up to one-third of their OEM group's profits. But this traditional business model is being challenged by several disruptive forces at the same time. Increasing regulation will have massive effects on capital requirements, operating models, and the IT of captives. Changing customer demand, from ownership to usage, makes the emergence of new mobility concepts possible. Changes in the automotive world, with autonomous and e-vehicles, add further uncertainty. Digitalization facilitates market entry for new competitors who are dedicated to catering to rising customer demands. How can captives successfully react to all these challenges? And what will be a successful business model for a captive in 2030? To answer these questions, a large number of diverse trends involving a high level of uncertainty need to be taken into account. When clustering these drivers, two clusters have the highest impact and the greatest degree of uncertainty. One is the ownership of the underlying asset itself, whether it be a traditional combustion engine car, a self-driving and or electric vehicle, or even a drone? Will captives still own these assets and their respective risks in the future? Or will they, by choice or by necessity, shift these assets to third parties? The second cluster is the structure of the mobility provider landscape. Will the market be dominated by a few global players? Or will there be a diverse set of mobility providers based on differences in regulation or in the regional mobility markets? And will there be new market entrants? For example, from the tech world. And what role will cities play in this world? Based on our scenario thinking methodology, we have developed four extreme yet plausible scenarios. They describe potential business models and the role of captives in 2030. In the first scenario, captives are the owners of the mobility ecosystem, running asset-based and service-based infrastructures in parallel. The second scenario describes a world in which captives have reduced their asset-based business and become orchestrators of various mobility services. In the third scenario, captives aggregate and manage best-in-class service providers. However, their relevance in the group has been noticeably reduced. In the fourth scenario, captives are still focusing on their traditional business model, but have optimized their operating model substantially. So, Let's take a glimpse into the future. Captives dominate the mobility service landscape with their full-service lease and multi-brand fleet portfolios. They have become the powerhouse within the group, contributing the majority of its profits. Captives manage to run asset-based as well as service-based infrastructures efficiently in parallel. Favorable financial regulation and technological advancements in artificial intelligence and data analytics have allowed the captives to improve their risk management capabilities significantly. This has enabled them to expand their financial services business and further extend their balance sheets. To achieve this, captives have had to increase efficiency in their traditional business. They used the additional resources to build and acquire new mobility concepts based on highly scalable and efficient operating models. To support these innovative services, captives develop digital and direct sales models. They now control vehicles over the whole lifetime by expanding their used car business. Captives have successfully built their own payment functionalities to facilitate these services and now can leverage large amounts of customer and vehicle data. As captives have become the key touchpoint for customer interaction in the group, they have also gained an active role in the OEM's R&D cycle by leveraging their vast number of customer insights. This enables the OEM to develop cars which meet a variety of mobility needs perfectly. In this world, captives actively decided to transform their asset financing business and become mobility orchestrators. To achieve this, they had to massively reduce their balance sheets. They reinvested freed-up funds in digital capabilities. 
the new service based business was built on a scalable and flexible infrastructure, highly customizable to changing customer preferences around the globe. The journey was arduous and risky, but it all paid off. Captives have managed to become the key interface for private, corporate and city customers and to orchestrate various mobility service providers. They have become the key customer relationship manager and have become true digital champions. Their main revenue streams stem from commission, data monetization and their payment platforms. They have also had to invest heavily in rebranding themselves to attract the best digital talents. Financial analysts appreciate that they have reduced their asset risk and that the captives are now significantly supporting the stock market value of their group. In this scenario, global financial regulators have focused on captives and capital requirements have tightened noticeably. As a result, OEMs decided to reduce captives' assets substantially. Furthermore, the freed-up capital reserves were used by the OEMs to transform their global manufacturing facilities. New fintechs and digitally enabled companies have attacked the captive's core business model and excelled in individual parts of the value chain. Captives today identify and aggregate best-in-class service providers. They manage them on behalf of their OEMs as well as other mobility providers who operate in this highly fragmented mobility landscape. To remain competitive, captives have had to reduce their cost base drastically. Their operating models have had to become lean and agile. The relevance of the captive in the group has been reduced in comparison to today, and the captives now have only very limited contact with the end customer. In this world, city authorities are increasingly demanding tailored solutions to their highly specific mobility needs. They are consequently tightening mobility regulations, leading to a relatively high cost of providing various mobility services. Major differences in city regulations regarding mobility and different technological adaption rates across the globe have prevented the emergence of globally dominant providers. Most of the specialized mobility providers do not have the scale to maintain their own broad and horizontal value chain and therefore outsource most of their vehicle financing and management processes to captives. In this world, captives have focused on optimizing their asset-based business model and their respective infrastructure. Their role towards private and corporate customers has remained almost unchanged. Acquisitions and in-house developments in the fields of AI and data analytics have enabled captives to excel in forecasting residual values. This, combined with mild regulation, allowed them to extend their balance sheets. Asset ownership and access to valuable customer and vehicle data are with the captives. Ownership of vehicles has become a strategic advantage for the OEM group. Captive still contributes substantial profits to the group, but without wider public recognition. Apart from the fact that the share of financial services assets in the OEM's balance sheet has increased even more, not too much has changed since 2017, to be honest. Take a deep breath. Are you excited about these future scenarios? Or do these prospects make you nervous? Are you confident that your captive is well prepared to weather the storm of change? There are examples of opportunities offered by the market, but quick and bold strategic decisions are needed in this world full of uncertainty to secure market potentials, as competitors are warming up to preempt them themselves. Now it is up to you to decide which role you want to play. The future is yours to manage. Deloitte has examined the impact of these scenarios not only on a qualitative level, 
but also investigated the quantitative effects of the different futures of the captive industry. The model simulates the financial implications of the scenarios for the balance sheet and also the profit and loss statement between 2016 and 2030 with a global perspective. It provides a wide range of KPIs for the traditional asset-based and the future service-based business of captives. Curious to know what this means for your company? Find out more in our Future of Captive study or contact us directly.